it's time to stir the pot. It's time to stir the pot. Greetings to all of my MCU fans. Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. As you all know, once in a while, I like to pu publish a video that's a little bit about issues of, of politics and, and race and comic books and, and comic book films and other pop culture media. Just want to let you know, I'm not really that political. I don't really have strong political views. Uh, I try to look at things very, very objectively, but this is something that I definitely felt that we needed to talk about today, and that is, why are you mad Captain America is black? So if you've all been watching Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, and you've been following what's going on in social media and things like that, there are some people that are vehemently against Sam Wilson being Captain America. Now, a lot of people say it's because, you know, Bucky should have been Captain America and the mantle should have been passed on to him. Uh, but let's look at the real issue. People are looking as Sam Wilson now as an SJW Marvel character just because he's black and he's replacing a white character. I'm here to tell you today, I don't think that is necessarily the case and I actually really don't mind the fact that Sam Wilson has become Captain America and I think he actually so far is being a really good Captain America. Go on, go on in the comments, call me an SJW, call me a snowflake, call me whatever, but keep watching the video to know why I think this. This isn't just me trying to, you know, get into all of what's popular and, you know, what's trending and be a Twitter, SJW. No, it has nothing to do with that. I just think this was an appropriate choice, and here's why. So the thing is, you know, with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we see Bucky really struggling with his past. He's really trying to come to terms with his past. And he never wanted the mantle of Captain America because he felt that he really wasn't worthy. He felt that he really did not espouse the ideas of Captain America. He he wasn't he basically was not Steve Rogers. Bucky always felt that Sam Wilson was the one who really kind of stood for what Steve Rogers represented and would be the most appropriate replacement for Captain America. Um and you know what? I I get it. The, I get why people are upset because overall I think People are just kind of tired of the whole, you know, SJW Marvel thing. There's been a lot of SJW-ism going on with, with Disney and Marvel uh, in the last, I don't know, maybe five or six years or so. You know, I get it. You're tired. There's, you know, Snowflake, Safe Space. This, I, I think this is all crap, by the way. You know, with the, with the new Warriors and uh, what they try to do with this. I don't even think this comic ever made it to print. But there are some characters in the, uh, in the Marvel Universe that distinctly have a political agenda. And I do think that is crap. I really do. I think, I think that's crap. It, and, and it really has no place in comic books. Um, I mean, so how is, you know, like even, even these characters, um, you know, we had... Tony Stark deliberately replaced as Iron Man with, with a young black woman. A lot of people are were mad about Miles Morales, the black Latino Spider-Man. Uh, although I do think that people are warming up to Miles Morales nowadays. Uh, and then, of course, we have the, the Captain Marvel. Uh, Captain Marvel is actually a hero. Nowadays, I cannot stand. I did not like Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. I did not go see the movie. Did not pay money for that. That I totally think is um, leftist political rhetoric just really trying to be uh, put front and center. And I that I don't agree with at all. You know, um, and then, of course, we had Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Totally agree with you. Hate it. I hated the prequel trilogy in general. Or sorry, the sequel trilogy. Uh, in general, I, I, I don't think it was really well done. You know, some people really liked The Force Awakens. Um, I, I felt The Force Awakens took way too many plot elements from A New Hope. Uh, the Last Jedi was just 
a product of new wave feminism. Uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was just way too in your face with politics. And then the rise of Skywalker, well, heck, they, that, that, was, that was a lost cause as soon as The Last Jedi hit the theaters because J.J. had to, you know, basically clean up a huge, huge mess. So I, I get it. People are tired because there's a lot of all of this liberal political rhetoric that's being forced into media that is especially published by Marvel, Disney. But how is it any different with Sam Wilson and Captain America? You know, people are saying, you know, why do you have to make comics political? Why make them political? You know, I would agree with you. Uh, in certain cases, it's not appropriate to make comics political. But we have to look at Captain America's roots and look at Captain America and say, heck, this guy's always been political. From Captain America's first appearance back in 1941 in Captain America Comics number one, he was a political character. He's always meant to be a political character. So to say that you're going to uh, have a Captain America hero in film, TV shows, and comic books that is not political, at least some of the time, is just really unrealistic. Like, heck, his first appearance, he appears punching Adolf Hitler in the face. Like, that's really political. And then in this picture here, um, this was around the Watergate era where Steve Rogers really loses faith in the, in the American government because of all of the corruption. Captain America has always been involved in politics in one way or another. So naturally, one would expect that they would deal with social and political issues that are relevant in uh, an American culture nowadays in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It's just, it was just inevitable. And you're probably thinking, you know, why replace Captain America to begin with? Well, they kind of had to because Chris, Chris Evans was pretty much done playing the character. He, he decided to voluntarily step down from playing the character of Captain America. So they decided to have him go out with Grace in Avengers Endgame. I actually really liked how they wrapped up his story. You know, they had him go back in time and live out his days with Peggy Carter, just like he always wanted to. I was actually happy for him. I think, I think that was great. That was for that character, but again, Chris Evans didn't want to play the character anymore, so now they're stuck with, you know, having to replace him. And Sam Wilson is the appropriate choice because he definitely kind of embodies what Captain America is about better than Bucky. Bucky's still an awesome character. I love Bucky. I think he's, he's great, but he's darker. He has, he has a really dark past and Bucky himself even feels like, you know, I can't be Captain America. He keeps wanting to push Sam to be Cap. Um, he even says to him at one point in the show, like, you know, why did you give away the shield? Why'd you give up that shield? Why are you making such a big deal out of something that has nothing to do with you? Steve believed in you. He trusted you. He gave you that shield for a reason. That shield, that is, that is everything he stood for. That is his legacy. Why? You know, like, Bucky was all up in arms about it when uh, the American government had John Walker become Captain, the new Captain America. And Bucky was like, come on, this guy's not Captain America. And, you know, you have some people that are trying to say, like, oh, you know, John Walker, you know, this is just them trying to make, you know, white people bad and make, like, white people look like they're, they're inferior. And I, I, again, it's hogwash, okay? Um, John Walker, they weren't trying to say that he, he, was, he was terrible and he wasn't um, a, a good character. Like, actually, at the end, by the end, you actually see that John Walker is not actually a villain, okay? Uh, I'll admit, when John Walker came on, screen first i was like okay who, who the heck is this guy okay um th this guy is not captain america he was arrogant um he was just not really a likable character to begin with and they were trying to show that this guy will not make a good captain america not because he's he's in fear and he doesn't have the experience or whatever but he doesn't have the heart the thing with steve rogers all the time was steve rogers had heart that's that's something that they really kind of uh pushed and made clear from the very first Captain America movie. You know, 
uh, I, my favorite line, I think, in, in, in all of the Captain America movies was when that scientist goes up to Steve Rogers and says, you know, but you didn't answer my question. Do you want to kill Nazis? I don't want to kill anyone. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. That, that is the character. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't like bullies. He stands up for, for, for the weak. He's, 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 he's compassionate. He's, he's great. That, that, that's not what John Walker was. John Walker is great in other ways, but he doesn't have the heart. And they prove that as the kind of the series progresses. They, they see that, you know, he's not Steve Rogers. Even taking the super soldier serum and being as strong as Steve Rogers does not make him Steve Rogers. Rogers. And um, I really thought it was appropriate that they had Sam uh, take over uh, and be Captain America just because he has the heart. And I, and I really thought it was great that they didn't have Sam take the Super Soldier Serum. You don't need Super Soldier Serum to be Captain America. You can be Captain America just by the ideas you espouse and the values that you implement into your daily life. That's what I really think is what it means to be Captain America. And I, I think it's a great message. And I, I think it was really great here. I especially loved how, um, you know, Isaiah Bradley, he was a cool character and he went through a really hard time. And, uh, you know, he, he pretty much tells Sam Wilson, like, you cannot be Captain America. You're a black man. You cannot be Captain America. This country will never accept you as black Captain America because you don't have blonde hair and blue eyes. And I really like how Sam Wilson pretty much politely says, like, you know, screw you. Yeah, I can be Captain America. And that speech he gave at the end, I thought was really good. This whole series to me, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was really tastefully done. And uh, I, I, I don't under, I think people are being a little sensitive um, when it comes to diversity in, in comic books and, you know, the MCU and, and all of this different content. Yeah, there is a time and a place to, to complain about, uh, you know, politics and comics. You know, when it came to Captain Marvel, uh, when it came to, uh, you know, The Last Jedi, okay? But I don't think, I think people now are just so tired of all that and they're just so sensitive over it that, uh, you know, they're just kind of looking at anything that has a hint of diversity in it and saying, you know, that's, that's bullshit. So, um, I don't think this is, this is the, the, the time to do it again, replacing, um, Sam Wilson with, you know, or replacing, uh, sorry, Steve Rogers with Sam Wilson is no different then when they replaced Jean Paul, or they, they, they had Jean Paul Valet take up the mantle of the bat back in the 90s when Bruce Wayne had his back broke. Uh, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, you know, I, I saw some, some posts and it just, uh, I just thought people, people are getting a little bit carried away with, uh, you know, panning anything with respect to diversity that Marvel's doing. There's a time and a place for diversity. Marvel has always been a diverse company, a company that tried to promote inclusivity with, you know, for example, with the X-Men, uh, so many other comics, they, they promoted these, these ideas of, of, of inc inclusivity and, and acceptance and, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, so I think they're carrying on that tradition a little bit more tastefully now, as opposed to how they were doing it, you know, a few years ago where all that stuff was in your face. I don't like it when it's in your face. I think it's, it's horrible. Uh, but now I think they're taking a step back and they're doing it a little better. So tell, tell me what you guys think of this. Uh, did you watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier? What did you think of it? You know, I love the show. Let me know what you think of it. I uh, always love hearing from you. Once again, this is Dante D signing off. We'll see you all in the next episode.